Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we're looking at The Justice Machine, number one, big premiere issue. Mike Gustavich is cool, uh, creator-owned uh, sort of indie superhero comic book from 1981. It has this awesome John Byrne cover, so I can't wait to show it to you guys. So hit subscribe, hit like. I'm going to cue the intro, and I'll be right back. It's Troy TV. All right, so here we go. Justice Machine, number one from 1981. Um, now, this was brought to my attention recently in a Burn, John Byrne group on Facebook, and I just had to add it to my collection. Um, even though Byrne only did the cover, I've been aware of this cover forever, and I am familiar with the Justice Machine. So um, I think I came on board with them. Um, 81 would have been a little early for me to be collecting comics regularly. And plus, like, I don't think I had made it to a comic book store by then either. So, um, uh, but of course I was a Burn fan. I would have scooped this up immediately. Even if I, I mean, I guess I would have known it was him. But I love this cover. It's great. Um, inked by Mike Gustavich. I, there's nothing in the editorial really how this came about. But a lot of people knew each other coming into comic books. And, um, William Messner Loeb's, um, is like the editor on this so maybe he knew he knew burn and hooked it up either way it's a great combination this is a classic cover if you're like a hardcore burn fan you're definitely familiar with this image um and i love it i think you know it's 81 so this is definitely sort of like at an evolutionary point for burn like um he's definitely like on the cusp of becoming like you know, like super hot and like a, a a big star. You know, I think this is like around maybe, you know, um, the height of X-Men as well. So, but you can see in his style, like it's, it evolved past this a little, but I love these characters. I've always loved them. I'm mostly familiar with the Justice Machine because one of my favorite comic books, The Elementals, um, debuted in Justice Machine Annual 1. Now, um, Justice Machine has been published by several publishers over the years, so they have several different volumes. And this is the first one, and it is so cool. I really like Mike Gustavich's inks over John Byrne. This is such a great Byrne cover. It's got, like, such classic superhero elements, like them bursting onto the scene, coming through some portal or whatever. And then you have the great, like, city skyline in the background that was so... Uh, synonymous with like 80s comics I think the New York skyline or you know a cityscape in general or variation of that I love this book it's oversized it reminds me of ElfQuest when ElfQuest first came out in this sort of large format even though ElfQuest was black and white um and this sort of up the ante by having color uh so Mike Gustavich um, I think he did eventually would like do some work for DC. I definitely remember him doing Infinity Inc. Now that I think of it and, um, uh, enjoying his work there. And, you know, I think he's just such a great artist. Apparently he taught art and he was teaching art while he was trying to self publish this comic at the same time. Um, one of his students was actually, uh, working, doing background inks for him. So that's cool, like a senior in high school. Um, I love uh, that. I mean, giving uh, a young artist like a chance like that, I think is so cool. Plus, you know, farming out your students' talent, why not? Here's, they have the original cover pencils that Byrne did. And I really wish this was much larger. I'm gonna have to see if I can find that online, but it looks super cool. And um, who knew? What a great anchor. I wonder if they ever work together after this. I'm definitely going to have to investigate that as well because I think it's a perfect combination. I really love this. It's like certainly cheesy by today's standards. I couldn't help but think of Chris Claremont with this dialogue here. They are law enforcers, these four. And in their world, they are good at what they do. <laughs> it's funny because Chris like Claremont like up the ante with Wolverine. 
he would never say he's good at what he does. He's the best at what he does. And what he does isn't very nice. Any longtime fan knows that quote. Um, <clears throat> I love his anatomy. I look, they look like such great classic superheroes. It's funny, it's a little like, eh, like I, I, it could be a little more dynamic. This is still early in his uh, penciling career, obviously. But I mean, it's so cool, just the same. I love the large size. Um, the Justice Machine, conceived, constructed by Michael Gustavich. Um, definitely doing all the heavy lifting, penciling, inking, writing, and lettering. Yeah, lettered by Gustavich. Which I have to say, you know, because not every artist is a letterer and his lettering is pretty good. He could probably make the balloons a little larger to give a little more white space around the lettering. And that's like the only critique. I love him lettering. I think it looks awesome. So Aiden abetted by William Francis Lobes. So I guess it's before he started going by Messner Lobes. Um, but we all know him from you know, co-writing The Max with uh, Sam Key, then his great run on Wonder Woman that I loved, where he famously put Artemis in Wonder Woman's place and put Diana in biker shorts and had her work at Taco Bell. So maybe he's a little crazy. I don't know. But anyway, he's a great name in comics. He's a legend. Um, Inker Charlie Wallace, that's the student of Gustavich's. Um teaching a comic book class, I guess. So, hey, what a better internship than working in a published comic book and colored by Bob Berry. I know nothing about him, sorry. It's funny because this is just like, in these pages, like you can see, like the newsprint is like definitely getting um, darker and it smells like an old comic. And I love that smell. I wish they could bottle it like geek. <laughs> they could call it geek. That would be perfect, right? And it smells like an old comic book. Who wouldn't want that? I mean, you would be beating off chicks with a stick. Okay, maybe I should edit that out. But whatever, I'm going to leave it in. Who, matter? Who cares? Anyway, I love this guy. I love this. Like, it's so classic, like, cheesy and, like, of the time. Like, it's 1980s. So, you know, it's got, like, sort of that everyone has an attitude, um everyone's going to kick each other's ass and everyone has like a smart ass sense of humor. And, um, I just love this guy's design here, as you can see on the cover. And it's funny cause it's such a weird costume. And I distinctly remember, uh, uh, George Perez doing a pin up of this. I don't know where it wound up being published. I know it's in focus on George Perez, the George Perez biography book, if you guys have that. But anyway, one of the funny differences, I feel like this is before Burns started drawing nipples. And I don't know that they had a mandate against male nipples or if it just wasn't super commonplace. Good use of Zipatone there. I always love to see that. Boy, this uh, cluster of buildings does not look like the buildings. I won't say what I think it looks like, but you can use your imagination. Um, but I really love this art. Gustavich is such a great artist. Um, I really like his uh, classic looking anatomy. It reminds me of like artists like, uh, what do you call it? Craig, Craig Hamilton and P. Craig, P. Craig Russell and just like how they do that really classic like Greek statue anatomy. Um, more dildos. Oh, I didn't, I wasn't gonna say what they look like. Anyway, that's a cool ship. I like that. It's very like classic superhero ship. And I love that it has the JM. See, reading the editorial page, like Mike Gustavich's vision for this, which is ironic because it's 1980. So this, and this predates like uh, Dark Knight and Watchmen. So he's saying he wants to do like a more, like a superhero book done right. Like their stories are planned out. So it, it unfolds naturally. And, um, more grim and gritty and they're real people and like, you know, they have important lives and they got bills to pay and all that stuff. So I don't know, you know, it's been around for years, I guess, sort of deconstructing, if you will, of a superhero genre. I love this page here. That is so cool. I love this effect. And I wonder like what went into the production of this. Cause it looks like there's, you know, screens going on, but color holds and, they would have to do overlays and just all kinds of, like, it was no joke to make this happen. And it could be done so easily digitally with Procreate or one of those programs. 
Um, it's funny, I feel like it used to be a little more jarring to see the World Trade Center in comic books, but it's been so long now, and it's just like, I mean, you know, never forget, of course, but I think it's, I don't know, you know, it existed, so it's part of the story, and I think that it's kind of cool to see it. It's kind of cool to see a comic book artist take on it. You know, it wasn't that old at this point in the story. Um, you know, not even 10 years old, I don't think so. Kind of cool and fresh and new and very neat that it's in there. And it lists William, William Lebs as a, Lebs, Lobes as a, um, anchor here and it's funny because I forgot that he is an artist and he did do a book I want to say maybe for Kamiko because uh while this is Noble Press and I'm imagining that's like just Mike Gustavich self-publishing this um even though they talk about having distribution and stuff so I'm not entirely sure supposedly this lasted for five issues I originally just got this for the burn cover but I am loving it so much that I really want like to complete the series now if indeed there are five issues out there, I need to get on that. It'll be fun to see how it evolves and um, what happens. And I love this too. It's actually kind of reminding me of Kirby's, uh, Jack Kirby, like the stuff he did with like photo manipulation and collages and things like that and some of his later work. Um, so super cool. I love this. And it does sort of smack a little bit of an amateur in a way, just because the per the perspective seems so precise and just like so like on point, one point. Yeah, that's one point perspective. But I love the buildings in the background. I remember always like trying to draw like stuff like that in my own comic book art. This editorial chain or chain page by uh, Bill Lopes is like totally crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he is definitely um, an interesting character, for sure, reading that. And here's, uh, I guess, his caricature, Bill Lebs. Lobes. Let's go with Lobes. That sounds better than Lebs, doesn't it? Anyway, uh, I love that Mike Gustavich um, is in the costume, the funny costume, and nipples. So, hmm. I guess it depends on the artist. I was trying to think earlier, like, He-Man in the original cartoon never had, like, nipples, did he? <laughs> Wouldn't that be crazy if he had, like, these big... <laughs> anyway, um, this is more exactly what I was talking about, like, the drawing a skyline like that. I feel like anybody who's aspired to be a comic book artist or is a comic book artist has done this background. It's funny because to see it, like, in three panels across like that, makes me think like oh it's kind of a cheap gimmick if you keep doing it over and over again but then again it's more or less breaking up the panel and showing just like the movement across the page I really like Mike Gustavich's art and um apparently uh Justice Machine would go on to have like 29 issues at Kimiko so um I feel like I got it like occasionally not all the time and now I don't know why because I feel like I have a better appreciation and like for it now it's like I see a lot of uh similarities in artists of the time like Bill Willingham on the elementals and even burn at that this period I think that might be why that's such a great combo there of them working together um and I think this is just fun I would love to see this reprinted I mean I don't know God only knows the odds of that happening. I wonder if, where, like, if uh, Gustavich, what, where the hell he is, what he's doing these days, uh, if he's retired. Um, I really like his art. Very cool. I mean, here's, like, obviously a portfolio piece or something. It's funny because uh, very Conan. I mean, I don't know if it's Conan or not, but definitely cut from the same loincloth for sure. This is an ad for a role-playing game. I thought that was kind of cool, especially since, it's, I mean, obviously they knew it was going to be a comic in a comic book and wanted to appeal to the demographic. I thought this was cool. I've never heard of this artist before. Feel free to comment if you have, and um, I definitely want to look up this guy. His Joe Zabel, and I love uh, that if that's his real name, it's hysterical because it seems like such a play on words of Jezebel, but... 
great fun art. I love the detail. I love this octopus uh, tentacle with all the suction cups on it and just cool, fun. Like you can see, it's funny because I feel like uh, people like Jim Rugg and Ed Piscor strive for this kind of effect in their art when this is basically like almost a weakness in a way, even though I really love it because it's like such a time capsule of the way comics were printed with the large dots and stuff like that. So it's very cool to see. Here's like interesting like mail away offers and you can get a subscription. How cool would that have been to have a subscription to this and have it show up in the mail? I love it. I love the oversized. Um, I kind of wonder it makes me wonder if they would go on to like print at a more normal size because it seems like it would be hard to maintain that, but who knows? I don't know. Anyway, going right back in my bag, baby. So that was The Justice Machine by Mike Gustavich. Really cool superhero team from the 80s. I love it. It feels like a great precursor to like Watchmen or something like that. Although definitely more lighthearted for sure. And um, such a bitch in John Byrne cover, inked by Gustavich. I think they make an amazing team. And I was really happy to find this. And I'm glad to add it to my collection. I had never seen it before. And like I said, uh, thank you, Stephen, for bringing it to my attention. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. I super appreciate it. Please subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And hit like, uh, share my content. And I'll bring you some more later. All right, thanks, guys.